Hello students, we are here for our video lecture series. Today our topic for discussion is chapter 2 of our book Indian Economic Development. The name of the chapter is Indian Economy during 1950 to 1990. First of all we should know that what is economy. Actually economy is a system by which people gets a living. In contrast economic system is arrangement for the production and distribution of goods and services in a society. And this economic system is divided into three categories. First is capitalistic economy commonly known as market economy sometimes also known as free market economy. The second economic system is socialistic economy or centrally planned economy or command economy and the third economic system is mixed economy. Let us start our chapter with the understanding of all these three types of economies. Firstly the capitalistic economy. Capitalistic economy is one where all factors of production that is land, labor, capital and entrepreneur are owned and controlled by private individuals. Owned by private individuals means that in capitalistic economy there is no role of government and if there is then it is very minimum role. Private individuals also suggest that motive in the capitalistic economy is profit maximization instead of social welfare. In this capitalistic economy market forces that is demand and supply plays an important role. Here income distribution is unequal means there is a wide gap between rich and poor. Consumer is the king pin of the capitalistic economy. It is the consumer who leads the producer what to produce. Producer produces only those goods which are demanded by consumers not as directed by the government. There is a greater degree of consumer choice in the capitalistic economy. Buyers and sellers both have a sense of competition and freedom of enterprise is also an important feature of capitalistic economy. Means entrepreneur is free whatever to produce but in according to the demand of consumer. So these were the features of capitalistic economy. Now move to the socialistic economy. Socialistic economy has features entirely different from capitalistic economy in the sense that here factors of production, land, labor, capital are owned and controlled by the whole community represented by the state. Whereas in capitalistic economy these factors of production were owned and controlled by the private individuals. In socialistic economy, government plays a major role in the socialistic economy. It is government who is the king pin in the socialistic economy. Therefore, motive here is also social welfare instead of profit maximization as was in the case of capitalistic economy. Due to the motive of social welfare, here income distribution is relatively equal. That is there is no gap between rich and poor role of market forces that is the role of demand and supply or price mechanism is little in the socialistic economy. There is no freedom of choice to the consumer and no choice of enterprise to the firm because everything is decided by government. But freedom from hunger is guaranteed in this economy. Choice of occupation that is what to produce by the producer is determined by some authority on the basis of certain socio-economic goals before the nation not on the basis of demand made by consumers as in the capitalistic economy. So students these were the features of socialistic economy now the turn of mixed economy. Mixed economy is one which has the features of both capitalistic and socialistic economy that is an economy which has both private sector and public sector where factors of production are partly owned by private individuals and partly owned by government that economy is known as mixed economy. Now can you tell what is the nature of Indian economy whether it is 
capitalistic economy, socialist economy or mixed economy? Surely, India has private sector and public sector both. Therefore, undoubtedly it can be said that India is purely a mixed economy. After discussing economy and its types, our next topic to discuss in this chapter is the 5-year plans of India and its goal. We also study the development policies in different sectors, sectors like agriculture, industry and trade from 1950 to 1990 in this chapter. So, let's understand the concept of plan and economic planning. First of all, we should know what is plan. What is the importance of plan? Why plan is necessary? A plan means how the resources should be put to their efficient use. In our day-to-day -day life also, we make plan for everything. Plan means general goal as well as specific goals to be achieved within a specific period. In India, plans are made for a period of 5 years, generally termed as 5 year plan. India also makes plan to be achieved over a period of 20 years. This 20 year plan, this long term plan is called as perspective plan. But you should know these 5 years plan provide basis to the long term perspective plans. The objective behind long term perspective plan is 5 years plan. Different goals are set for different 5 years plan in India. There may be a goal of modernization of technology. If we modernize the technology, we have to remove the labor and have to adopt the machinery. But now it will be in conflict with the goal of generation of more employment as technology hits the labor, technology hits the employment. So, the ultimate responsibility for overall planning is with the planning commission which was set up in March 1950. This planning commission set several socio-economic objectives to be achieved under various five-year plans. But whatever may be the objective of a, any five-year plan, the basic goals behind all five-year plans are categorized into four categories. These four basic goals are goal of economic growth, goal of modernization, goal of self-reliance and goal of equity. Let's discuss these four basic goals of five-year plans one by one. First is economic growth. It is primary objective of any five-year plan due to backward and constant state of our Indian economy on the eve of independence. We know at the time of independence, we were very backward. We needed economic growth. So, it is the primary objective of any five-year plan. Growth means increase in country's capacity to produce more, more of both goods and services within the country. Continuous increase in gross domestic production is a good indicator showing economic growth. Gross domestic production means market value of all the goods and services produced in the country during an accounting year. Gross domestic production is obtained from the different sectors of the economy, namely the agricultural sector, industrial sector and the service sector. Simply we can say whatever we produce in our all the three sectors, whether production is in agricultural sector, whether production is in industrial sector, and whether production is in service sector, whatever we produce in all these three sectors, actually we convert it into their monetary value. And the total of that monetary value is known as gross domestic production. And if our gross domestic production is increasing per year, per year, per year, we can say that we are going towards economic growth. Contribution made by each of these sectors makes up the structural composition of the economy. Apart from this, economic growth may also be in the form of a larger stock of productive capital or a larger size of supporting services like transport and banking or it may be in the form of increasing efficiency of productive capital and services. 
if we want that people of India are to enjoy a more rich and varied life then it is necessary to produce more of both goods and services that is to increase economic growth. Now, our second goal of five-year plan is modernization. Modernization was set as an objective of five-year plan because India's cost of production was high and it could not also compete with international brands in quality as India lacks technical knowledge. This was the technical knowledge which requires modernization. And we know adoption of new technology is known as modernization. It means those changes in economic activities which make an economy more progressive and modern. Actually, a layman understands that modernization means adoption of technology. But modernization means something more. It does not refer only to the adoption of new technology. Rather, it means more. Modernization also means changes in our social outlook. It means changes in our cultural outlook such as we should give importance to women also. We should recognize that women should have the same rights as men. A modern society uses the talents of women in the workplace like in banks, school, etc. And such a society which uses the talent of women is considered as more prosperous and modern. Now, the third goal of every five-year plan is self-reliance. Self-reliance means independent of others. It means not depending on external help. It helps, means self-reliance helps in reducing the interference of foreign countries in providing us food supplies, capital investment and debts. The first seven five-year plans gave importance to self-reliance, which means First seven year plans focuses on avoiding import of those goods which could be produced in India itself. Fourth goal of every five year plan is equity. Equity refers to equality. Equity means that economic development achieved through above three goals is shared by all the citizens to promote social justice. It is important to ensure that the benefits of economic prosperity are reaching to the poor sections also as well instead of being enjoyed only by rich. So, in addition to economic growth, modernization and self-reliance, equity is equally important for the growth of an economy. Equity aims that every Indian should be able to meet his or her basic needs such as food, house, education and health. Students don't forget education and health are also our basic needs. It was the early time when basic needs were considered only three that were food, cloth and house. But in today's world, education and health are also our basic needs. Equity also aims at reducing inequality in the distribution of wealth. So, all this was about goals of five-year plans. This all was for today. Let's revise what we have done today. We started our chapter with the term economy. Simultaneously, we compared the economy with the term economic system. Then we discussed three types of economic systems, namely capitalistic economy, socialistic economy and mixed economy. Next, we discussed the term plan and importance of plan. And lastly, today we did four basic objectives behind each five-year plan, namely basic goal of economic growth, basic goal of self-reliance, basic goal of modernization and basic goal of equity. The rest we will do in our next lecture. Thanks for today.